mahalo for listening to KKCR and for supporting Kauai Community Radio. And I have a special guest in here right now, Liko. Can you say howdy? Aloha. Okay, i got to get you <laughs> ramped up there. Uh, Liko yeah. Martin is with us, and we're going to be talking about many things to do with uh, land use issues. And uh, Liko, I might uh, play your song first. Okay, sure. And and why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, this is a song that <coughs> I was inspired to write about year 2000 when I was uh, down in the Puka. Anybody knows where the Puka is? That's Hanamaulu Valley. When uh, one of the uh, old Konohiki families um, decided to... Uh, uh, get involved in a tax appeal that questioned uh, uh, questioned why the county was taxing eight taro patches that they had never surveyed, that they had no idea where they belonged. Um, and it just, you know, led on and on uh, to other things. But actually this song was written just prior to uh, my going and becoming involved with Abel Louie on the Big Island, mm-hmm. who I believe is going to be calling in today, because some of the information and <coughs> that arose in that in that tax appeal case and with uh, Butch Durant and the Ohana uh, could be uh, directly applied in Abel's situation, and it held them off for quite a while, and, uh, and it's still holding, although um, there's a lot of fish in the net. You might say that. So anyway, this is a song called Take the Signs Off the Land. Okay, well, thank you. And you're a very prolific writer, yeah? Well, they still come to me, yeah. Last one was Tutupele versus Babylon. Very interesting. As I was walking the other day On some ancestral land I heard a voice calling out to me Child, where are you going? I've been waiting such a long, long time For you to come home You and your family living out on the edge Broken hearts on the run Take the signs of the land I just want to go home Take the signs of the land When you're Take the signs of the land 
like that a lot. I really like the just the the sound too. What's the name of that CD? Uh, that CD is called um, Lico Martin right now. Okay. <laughs> is that how how old is that one? Well, it was put into production about five years ago. A friend of mine, uh, Richard Moon, on up in the mainland, and he, you know, and he brought in some great musicians. Uh, uh, people, you know, Bay Area musicians, and uh, so, you know. Well, so let me let me in case there's p- probably many listeners who d- aren't familiar with you yet, Liko, and so part of the people know you as a musician. You're a rather prolific musician. You've been writing songs for decades, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but also you have a very interesting history. You grew up around the people who built the the state of Hawaii, the political state of Hawaii. Do I have that correct also? Well, that's a pretty good uh, <coughs> kind of a little bit of an introduction. Yeah, my, my grandfather was a uh, territorial representative to the United States Congress, territorial days. He sat on the uh, council at large and um, hence, you know, the family's been involved in um, that's what it's in, in um, I'd say public service rather than politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, public service, uh, judges, and things like that. And my mother was in the courts, and I grew up in the legislature and used to work in the print shop and, you know, fall asleep in Ilani Palace. That was kind of where I, I used to wait to be babysat, and you know, they picked me up at the foot of Kamehameha statue. So. Mm-hmm. And we had your, <laughs> your half brother on a couple mm-hmm. few weeks ago, Sorry. and his father. Also was uh, yeah. like a lawyer and very instrumental yeah. in the politics. Uh, yeah, the that's Sai Shim and Alvin. His, Alvin Shim was uh, well. They they were the, came with the unions in '59 when the uh, federal corporation was started, State of Hawaii. It was a corp- corporation, and uh, he was uh, very helpful in uh, setting up uh, programs like Alulike and. Um, and other things, you know. He was he actually he was close friends with Muktananda, and you know. <laughs> right, and then your mother's brother was a judge. Do I have yes, that right? Yes, just Walter. Yes. And that like a, a Supreme Court judge uh, in Hawaii. Well, he was uh, not a Supreme Court judge, uh, but he did a ruling uh, dealing with the posh some years ago. That's uh, the a public gathering act, rights, gathering yeah, rights yeah, for gathering rights. indigenous he was on the bench. people. Yeah, he was. Well, for the native Hawaiians, which of course needs a lot of, we got to kind of go under the microscope to examine um, what it means. But yeah, he was sitting on the bench there at that time. So, being in the, um, for me, the the political arena did not come to uh, surface until I met George Helm. Okay, and then. Tell us a, a, just a sh- short version okay. about George Helm. Yeah, short we brought him sh- up before, yeah, but yeah, uh, George uh, was um, a great singer, of course. And if people don't know that, but he was he was very astute. He had uh, because he traveled abroad, especially on the East Coast, uh, became aware of certain uh, ish- information, documents, and standings that that are only now coming to surface, such as uh, the executive agreement between Cleveland and Liliwokalani. And at the time of Kaho'olawe, which is in the mid-70s, uh, Kaho'olawe was under an executive order, and taking it verbatim, when you take the executive orders verbatim, it's basically uh, has to be obligated to local governments, to the authority of the people there. So going to Kaho'olawe, was not asking the military to stop. It was demanding them to stop. S- to stop bombing to stop. this island yes. that had been set aside right. for military practice. Right. F- under the authority, from the authority of the Kanaka. And you, I'm going to use the word Kanaka because the term Native Hawaiian has a whole different political and as coming to be uh, questionable uh, historical significance here with respect to um, I'd say uh, the obligations for self-determination under international law. Mm-hmm. And okay. for the listener who might have just tuned in 
You're listening to Lico Martin on Kauai Soapbox Live, and we will be discussing land issues and, and actually displacement of peoples and a number of issues relative to the Public Land Development Corporation mm-hmm. and uh, quiet titling, which it, it like the Public Land Development Corporation is almost a, a, a big collective quiet title. So um, we're, uh, what I really like being able to share for the listener who is new to understanding this discussion, Lico Martin has had almost a, a lifetime of activism both through the arts and, and learning so much through the legal system. You're almost mm-hmm. like a quasi-lawyer. You didn't go to law school, is that correct? It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you almost function like that. Well, after especially... Um, when I, I had sort of had to self-exile after Kaho'olawe because I kind of picked up the torch and was a re- chairman, uh, re- campaign chairman for Cooper Brown who ran against uh, Senator Inouye. As a Republican. As a Republican. And I guess we just drew, uh, you know, hitting too many buttons so I had to go away. Music is very powerful. I remember one of the campaign things that we made and this woman called in and says, you can't win an election on a song. Well, maybe not an election, but to inspire the re- revival of a nation and consciousness of people, that's what All Hawaii Stands Together has done, which is one of the songs I, that came to me crafted for none other than and by the request of Don Ho, who was very supportive um, of myself personally. Um, in the d- time of Kaho'olawe, he was very concerned of the fate of the people and uh, did whatever he could from the, you know, is kind of in both worlds. But yet, I grew up in Waikiki. Don grew up in Waikiki. There's no discrimination in Waikiki. You don't, you don't save a person of this race and not save the person of the other race. So, Don, in that way, is very humanitarian, and I think that's that's the approach that we have to to uh, focus on here. That this is a humanitarian issue and how it affects all of humanity, although one uh, one part of humanity may be, um, you know, sort of getting, getting the axe more than the other. And then we're all a bit of a blend, like you have some European blood in you, yeah? Like, um, sure. What, um, that's on your father's side? Well, my father, yes, my father's uh, family uh, escaped from the Inquisition in Spain. And eventually they went to England, came through Canada, and and, uh, when I went there as a child, two years old, to Fresno, California, it was Peaches. Uh Uh-huh. And he, my father was a soldier, came over in 45, fell in love with my mother, who was a beautiful singer, who had to leave her career when she got, when they got married and I arrived. And um, otherwise my mother is... uh, the Chinese ancestors uh, out of Maui, Afongs out of Maui, and a little bit of Irish actually coming from uh, the Harveys in Ireland and um, District of Cork, Reddington, who came here and actually were uh, took up arms on the steps of Iolani Palace. One of my grandparents uh, on the Irish side, and that's Harvey, who married into the Cavello Heli'i line here on Kauai. Right. And then, um, you know, got what I do, got Chinese, and they were involved in the whole cultural revolution. And now I'm Kanaka, so I'm just like four corners. <laughs> that, that's right. But I mean, like, our hearts are kind of coming together, too. Yeah. And on Kawaii Soapbox Live, we have a really range of listeners from uh-huh. the people who are just learning about things to the Kanaka who might know a whole lot of this history and everything in between so I'm glad that we're sharing this and on this in this hour or this two hours we will be hearing from in the not too distant future a caller from the big island there's been a lot of or I should call it the island of Hawaii is um Moku Okeave would be appropriate too Moku Okeave yes. is that the name of Hawaii uh, island that's Keave was the is the was the chief there the head chief and the person who would be calling Timoteo is a descendant of Timoteo Keave Okay, well, we're going to hear from him, and before that, we are going to be hearing from, because I'm not sure, actually, if Uncle Abel is calling in or not. I know he will be calling in tomorrow on Ka'iulani's show. Um, 
he may or may not be on on this this show, but we do you know? He's I just he his, my phone just went off oh, okay. from the phone where he called, but I don't know okay. if he knows the number here. To okay, call hi him. uncle, you'll be calling in at eight two six seven 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 one, or the toll free number is eight six six two seven five one 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 two. So again, eight two six seven 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 one. That's eight oh eight eight two six seven 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 one. We're going to also be hearing from a person who was at the Democrat convention on Oahu. I mean, excuse me, on Hawaii Island. Many people have been really stating forward statewide about, um, uh, you know, not liking this public land development corporation, which has pulled forward this 1.8 million acres plus another 200,000 in the Hawaiian homelands. And so, when they were at the Democrat convention, I, Democratic convention across the state, pretty much the governor, the um, uh, um, Senator Ianoi. Anoy, I'm sorry, um, potential Senator Hirono, a lot of the different people, they've all been seeing people making a pretty strong statement against the Public Land Development Corporation, but there was a pretty strong reaction at Hilo where their signs were even torn up and thrown out of the, the hall without any kind of violent or disruptive behavior. So we're going to be hearing a handful of things. Okay, I'm just letting... Great. The listener, no. We have a caller on the line right now, and we'll see if, in fact, this might even be one of these people. Aloha, you are on the air. Hello? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Um, you're on KKCR, live on air. Hi, hi. Aloha, Kak. I'm live from the Big Island. Hi. Hi. How's it, bra? Eh, how's it? How you able? How you guys? Okay, okay I man. I love you. Oh, we are playing catch up, bro. Okay. I love you. Hi, Bala. How you, man? Okay, Felicia is here. She wants to, you know, talk story. Yeah, talk like um, we we felt that I want to say first of all, I'm sorry for what has happened where your home has been bulldozed. I understand yesterday in the area that you've been, uh, you know, keeping safe for many years, and it for us it demonstrates a lot of what's happening in in the island chain of where people are being forced off their land, Kanaka Maoli, losing their land. And do, what would you like to share with our listeners on Kauai and the north shore of Oahu and then anyone worldwide streaming live? Um, first of all, Maolo Kia Kua. And thank all the people out there they send the aloha and support Malo. One of the things that you need um, when you come home to the Aina and you have to live in the Apua you have to have your bird right and your airship and land ownership and proof of genealogy and kuleana tende and you have to live on the land that has this call kuleana um, responsibility and all that comes with malamering the aina from mauka to makai from above and below all living things that walk the land that fly over the land and below the land and in the ocean and all of these things is the Kuliana that is in the Atma that this thing was preserved for the people that was his 
responsibility that the people have a place to stay and to be safe and to be protected and to be fed. These are the requirements of the land that Kekua gave for Tutanan Dam and it passed down to us in much more than I can even put or think in my head of the Kuliana responsibility that it comes with all of that. And we take care of um, the turtles, the, 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 the thing that it's happening now as I speak to you. On the next full moon, there will be some turtle hatching at Kawa. And I've been taking care and writing about for those um, that are being born and to make sure that they have a chance to survive, to go back to their Oana in the ocean. And, um, the other one is to try to go back to Kawa to go and Wara, the Kalo, my big brother, and all the things that was planted there, the coconut tree that was given to me for my for my wedding twenty something years ago came from Fiji. My son's pickle stayed there. I want to go over there and say the aloha. I was talking to to the plants when they gave me two hours. So um what I need to say is I love you and I thank all you out there that are listening to this. Uncle Abel um came home because God told him to come home. I came from Hawaii 20 something years ago. I didn't know who I was or what my queen, I know anything. The voice told me to come home. And I have learned so much that the land and the people are in one. And the land yearns for the people to come home to make a plan for you. All of these things that I'm talking about, I haven't gone there. I talked to the mayor, I talked to, not, not the mayor, but uh, uh, Mr. Lau to ask permission if I could go there to go and water the plants and the vegetables that are, was ready, being ready for the surf contest that be coming up. And, um, they say that I couldn't. I talked to him and I went to the police station and I made some uh, reports about what took place. And um, I also lost my ID and things of that nature, which had my, um, it was in my phone case and I got it back and all my possession and everything the police department of Kau have done a great job, the best that they can, and all the county workers that put my Oana staff all together, and including my chicken coop, Henrietta. The chicken is 18 years old, and name is Henrietta. Thank you for not talking my chicken coop. And um, there's a many people that try to help and do the things that we could, even including the mayor and his people. Whether that mayor, I don't know, you know, um, I'm not going to go say bad and bash or anything, but because if um, I know uh, that I have walked this walk, and um, I know about forgiveness, I know about understanding, and I love you, and um, thank you, and um, 
I mean, if anybody has anything else to ask me or whatever. And, you know, I think that you are so loved. I know that, like, I shared a picture on my Facebook page that I got from somebody else, and then there was 68 shares off of my share. And I saw, I don't know for confirmation, but there's people putting things around that, like, a thousand people are going to go on hunger strike tomorrow out of you know because what has happened to you symbolizes something much deeper than one man being pushed off the land it is symbolic of a whole culture of people who care deeply for the land and seemingly you know independent of race that that feels personally wronged having you removed from that area well um, that is that is true that people um, um, setting up for their rights and um, I have put signs up there I've been out in the front with signs that said stand up for your rights give you that the give you up Amen. So now is the time to rise the nation of the people. Amen. Voice your, um, your mana'u because of the unjust that, um, that is taking place. It's not just about evil. No one can go to the beach. I mean, to, to, to the place. The damn everybody. And they gave us two hours, and I went to go and water the plant. And then I was getting some kind of pain. But anyway, I, um, the message is, is, is that um, the people, I mean, they are going through the same thing that I am, but much more now because of what that took place. A kawa. Kawa belongs to the people. God's people. And and Moses is here too. But he has just come. He is there with me. One of the tenants that he, he was the three people that got uh, removed of the land the morning on the twenty fifth Thursday. Moses and Katrina. Katrina is one of the ladies who got arrested. And she's the only one who got arrested. In the meantime, uh, I was getting some pain and then in my chest and, and, and tingling and in my eyes. The Makai said, Uncle, are you alright? And I said, I need my I need my medication. And she hit the bottom whatever it was and told the people that he was having this and they couldn't find my stuff because the Makai had my case and India had my 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 Nazi tablet so they had to anyway I was taken outside in the front and they was going to do all of this thing and got me taking me to the hospital and I told them was I being arrested and they said, no, they call for your stuff and you, your heart beat and everything is, is not too good. And that's up to you, but you know, you're not under arrest or anything. So I said, I can go. They said, yes, but you, you have to sign the paper in case anything should happen. And I said, I needed to go find out about the way I can go get Katrina because they took her to corner a uh, jail and what I was going on um, get a uh, hitch ride or catch a ride or whatever and to find a way to go get her and see you know and Moses was Moses just came out and he was on his way because he had a, a doctor's appointment and there was already made for 11.30 that morning and we were being all escorted outside of the highway. 
And then later on, we would all meet at the gas station because somebody else drove uh, Katrina's car, and I and I drove the car, and somebody else drove the van. And that's how we departed and filled the gas, and we went all the way. And here I am now talking to you. And and you are talking to us on KKCR Hanalei KAQA Kilauea, and you know the state cares very much. I, I don't mean the state government, but I mean the people of Hawaii care for the hardship that you've been through, and it's um, you know such a a pervasive issue of how that we you know look at who gets pushed off for military and industrial development it's um uh very very difficult and i i wish you strength and i and i hope that like change can happen that 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 maybe something can happen that makes an impact where it turns around the the mindset of the people who have forcibly removed you yes and um you know, the time is now for the people because this is the Pico Kea law. This is where uh, peace is coming out and reaching out to the rest of the uh, rest of our Ohana across the world. And um, come on with you in the war, go on, put down your guns and go back to your family and take care of your kuleana, your family. Your wife, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. And I have to realize that all of these things is, the gig is up. No need all of this. No need all uh, men, you know, carry all of these kind of things. The people that stay running around on the street, they know there is, you know, I like go one place where I am welcome. Where is this place called Aloha? And I found it at Kawa and I came home. The people of Ki Aloha. I had to learn about compassion, kindness, understanding, forgiveness, love, truth, honesty, honorable, worthy. And he came from this word. And I could sing them. Only one word. down on that so if people can get good her name is Shelly and she will know that 
I am going to ask the people for the prayer for you. She has a very disease, okay? Wana. And she's been living on, the, on God's grace and the family. And you guys can say some words for her. I love you, sweetie. But why you give me a call, okay? Hello. Uh, Hello. All right, Abel. Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, keep listening to the program. Oh, yeah. And then, and then maybe hang up the phone for right now. Or stay on if you want. But we're going to talk about... Uh, Felicia wants to talk I'll about... stay on. Okay. okay. We'll have Shoot. you stay on. And we yeah. have um, uh, another person calling in Hello. from the Big Island or from Hawaii. Okay. So let me have you both on at the same time. I love you. Okay. Uh, we're going to call back. No. No. Okay. Okay. Aloha. You're on the air. Aloha, Felicia. Hi. Thank you so much for holding, Robert. And you were you were hearing Uncle Abel? I was hearing Uncle Abel. Yeah, a lot of heartache. Yeah, he's been out, he's been there a long time. I used to go when I was younger. I used to go down to Kawa and surf, and uh, always was treated very well by Uncle Abel down there. And uh, you know, you've been you've had like Liko here decades of activism in Hawaii it's some you have a an Italian name like me you are you moved here in adulthood yes uh, actually I moved here when I was young my mom uh, married a Hawaiian uh, when I was a boy in California and uh, so I, we came they came back to Hawaii when I was still pretty young Oh, okay, because you seem to have a big connection with what has gone on, and and I know that you're off to a steering committee meeting, but I wondered if you could share a little bit about what you experienced as the reaction of what I consider First Amendment rights or the ability to speak your mind, um, you know, at these Democratic conventions that happened on Hawaii. Yeah, well, you know, I've, I have been doing this for a long time. I've been a delegate, a delegate to the uh, Democratic Convention in Honolulu, and I've attended a number of these meetings over the years. And uh, and we've always been able to hold our signs. And there were different issues back then. It was a geothermal issue, and uh, um, at the Democratic Convention in Honolulu, and it's interesting because it was about twenty years ago, and. Uh, I think Cayetano was a uh, governor and Neil Abercrombie was uh, a congressman then and they were trying to keep us out of the uh, I think it was at the Sheraton Hotel the ballroom and they were trying to keep us out and uh, and Neil Abercrombie intervened and he said oh no you know we're an inclusive party and, and uh, you can come in and they let us in and we held our signs in the back of the room and uh, it was just really a contrast to what happened here in Hilo uh this last Friday, when uh, and you know they they actually roughed people up and threw them out of the building for just for standing there holding signs. And I did see some of the live stream, and it seemed that people were just quietly standing there holding signs, though very evidently holding signs saying uh, dissatisfaction with the Public Land Development Corporation. It was interesting to me to see these signs being held very clearly there from the stage when I didn't see any footage of a, a speaker, a candidate coming forward and acknowledging what I considered the elephant in the room. And my understanding is is when the signs were torn up and people were thrown out that, that uh, the, the prosecutors and different people sitting in the room just sat there and let it all happen. Yeah, it wasn't a single one of, there was, uh, there was 150, 200 Democratic Party there. Neil Abercrombie was there, Brian Schatz, Malama Solomon, uh, Billy Kanoi, um, Lincoln Ashita, Mitch Roth, the prosecutors here, and, and a whole bunch of them, and all their campaign people, they were all there. And, um, you know, this went on for 10 or 15 minutes because they were able to get, there was, there was probably 12 people or something there holding signs quietly, just standing in one corner of the room. And then uh, a big security guard came over and started ripping the signs out of people's hands and just shoving them out the door. And he got them all out except for me. He couldn't get me out. 
and, and he told me, I, well, he told me I had to leave, and I told him I wasn't going to leave, and he tried to rip my sign out of my hand, and he couldn't do it. And uh, and he that went on for, he tried six times, you know, maybe a few more, six or eight times to rip the sign out of my hand or rip the sign up. So this went on for quite a while. And then, uh, and then when he couldn't do that or get me out of the, you know, move me, he turned around and stood right and, you know, I was against the wall and stood very close to me in front of me. And so I held the sign above his head for about 10 minutes. So there's no way that, uh, that the people in the room didn't know what was going on. And during that whole time, not a single one of them came over to see what was going on to or intervene in any way. And I was really disappointed, you know. Um, they all had their signs. Like, they, all the politicians, they had their banners and their signs. And, you know, so it wasn't like nobody else had signs. So they just didn't like the message that you were sharing. When, when, but I understand because I've been watching this on Facebook. Pretty much on every island, when the governor's team has gotten to each of these democratic conventions, there are signs at every one of them. And when they pull up on the bus, there's actually a lot of people there voicing that dissatisfaction. I, I'm curious. The people in the room, are they mostly on campaign teams, or were there many what I consider miscellaneous people coming to learn? Uh, I would say the majority were campaign teams. It was it was pretty interesting. Like I said, there was probably, you know, 200 people or something like that. And, uh, you know, I've seen uh, when, like, as an example, Dominic Yagong was running for mayor, and he had a fundraiser there, and he had, you know, two or three times as many people there. So they didn't have a great turnout, uh, you know, from the public. It was just mostly a, a rah-rah, you know, they all pat each other on the back kind of thing. So if uh, they're hearing a voice from people who bothered to come, there's a succinct voice that's saying, hey, this is a big issue, we need to discuss it, and that that didn't come over. I mean, did any of the political people speak to the Public Land Development Corporation, or did uh, they all avoid it? Yeah, I didn't hear a single one of them mention it, and, and you know, it wasn't, they were greeted in Kona with the same kind of signs, they were greeted in Honoka'a with people with these uh, PLDC signs, and uh, and I was in Pahoa before Hilo, we had about 35 people in Pahoa, and they, it was a completely different thing, the governor wasn't there in Pahoa, or neither was Malama Solomon, uh, but they invited us in, you know, Steve Hirakami at the Haas School, and come on in, you guys, and be part of this, and, and we stood around in the Pahoa one at the school against the wall and it was uh, fine there was no problem at all it was only in the in the Hilo but even in Pahoa they didn't not one of the candidates mentioned the PLDC even though we all had these signs yeah it wasn't brought up at all it's it's disturbing isn't it because to me that's showing that the political system is broken I, I couldn't agree more. I, it's uh, there's a disconnect between between the uh, power brokers here, or the politicians, and and the people. You know, it's it's a really uh, it's frustrating and uh, it's scary in some ways that that uh, they have their own agenda, and it really doesn't seem to matter. You know what the people want or, or what the people have to say these days. It's, uh, it's all corporate. It's, you yeah. know, they, Robert. Yeah. Robert, this is Lico. I'm just, you know, I'm a, I'm a good listener too. <laughs> so, so given these circumstances, you know, um, can now, so what is the problem then that the the Democratic Party or the way things are done here in Hawaii, uh, the lack of parity, the lack of equal footing. Um, can we attribute this to the events of 1893 and the circumstances that, uh, situation that we now find ourselves in, uh, with, uh, with bas basically a, a corporation which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's plantation mentality. It's, I, a, it's apartheid, you know. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I, I think uh, things have been done a certain way here, and they've gotten away with that for so long. Um, but it, it seems to even be escalating beyond that now. 
you know, to this new world order, even if you want to say stuff like that, Agenda 21 with this PLDC, mm-hmm. where now they're even going to take, you know, the ceded lands and, and uh, mm-hmm. for corporate use. And, you know, I mean, my feeling is that, um, you know, we're almost like slaves in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, all of us, really, in a lot of ways, because, uh, you know, we have to work... Um, just to have a house like it takes 30 years a house is so expensive now and before all this you know you built your own house out of materials and and uh you know it wasn't such a big deal you didn't have to go to work for the rest of your life just to pay for a house um and that kind of thing and and the bank now owns you because most of the money you make goes to a bank so you can have a house and uh and I think, I hope that I didn't get too far off your track of what you were saying there. Well, the, the, my question, uh, Felicia and I were speaking just before the show arrived, and, you know, there's a lot of lot of issues other than just taking care of myself and my little garden, uh, wherever that may be, uh, that the acceleration that you're talking about, especially with this Public Lands Development Corporation, I think was really triggered by two events. One was three years ago when the state and OHA went before the Supreme Court of the United States and tried to sanitize 1893 by presenting a scenario where the corporation uh, Supreme Court suddenly says uh, we can't sell these lands. Um, and that's much less than what the inventory is. And the Supreme Court answering basically saying, because I flew to Washington, D.C., okay, went to the court, and the justices came out and they said, they were really puzzled as to why the OHA was here and why the uh, Attorney General was there. And the reason why they were puzzled was because you either believe that 1898 and the events of 1893 and 1900 and 1959 were all lawful, or you don't. But the corporation was playing the uh, the apology uh, resolution to the hilt, hoping that they could uh, create a reservation. In my observation, this is what the play was, was to create a reservation. We have people in Congress. We will go for federal recognition. We will approach the Supreme Court of the United States and try to bypass 200 years of jurisprudence and international law. Uh, they didn't get anywhere. So when the Supreme Court justices said, we have no authority over Hawaiian law, they literally returned, they meaning OHA and the parties that be, because they're both, you know, they're the same creature, although you think that OHA was created out of a sense of justice. The plot really uh, reveals itself because OHA was created to see if we could persuade some of the Kanaka to become a Native American, Native Hawaiian vis-a-vis and come under federal Indian law and it didn't work. So that being said by the court, they come back and they have accelerated. Okay? Accelerated. Because basically the court is saying, well, you either own it or you don't, Mr. Bennett. What are you talking about? And that's, I think, what has been the impetus to say, well, let's just go for it now. So they've created this and exploitation are the prop- is the proper words. Abercrombie, what he could not get accomplished uh in the in the as uh, being there in the House of Representatives, and what they have paid in order to get the votes all these years, they have been pulled. You know, they have been baiting and paying off and giving uh, permits, ag- uh, Department of Agricultural permits, as an example in Kawa, where someone like Ed Olson, who's the head of the Nature Conservancy, who can bulldoze three thousand acres, and when we're Looking at where's the permits, we stop. It's a federal permit. So these Abercrombie comes back. He tries to. He does what he couldn't get in Congress. I think is a treasonable action, and the treasonable action of the corporation too, because they've forgotten. Uh, they've just gone rampant. I mean, you know, closest thing I can compare this to is if you look at Nazi Germany 
And if you were to apply the Nuremberg principles, uh, Robert, I think we've got a case here that should go before the United States Congress to have some serious oversight hearings uh, with respect to human rights issues and the uh, degenerating role of the uh, constituents of Congress and the people who are the body politic to, um, to address these issues because they're pitting people against people. They've already discrimination, it's apartheid here, discrimination, the revision of the statutes is discrimination against Hawaiian law, the deletion of the word national between Hawaiian and usage in the corporation bylaws in the Constitutional Convention of 1978, which set up OHA, is part of the cause of this problem because as soon as that word was deleted, the tax map keys started going out and the quiet titles started coming on. But just because you de de delete something, it doesn't mean it still exists. I want to let you, you guys know that Uncle Abel is also on the air with us. Are how's you, are how's you it, Abel? How's it? I'm, I'm, I'm good. So, um, I'd like to share something to do with what Bada Liko was talking about. Okay. Yeah, a lot again. I, um, two years ago, uh, we went on um, file a contested the sale of Kawa. And, um, we took our evidence and, uh, and our stuff and we presented <laughs> at the contested case that was in Wow. Uh, me, Liko, and Katrina went to that hearing and, um, The federal and everybody would set up this meeting for to have this thing straightened out, but the county didn't show up for the hearing because I don't know why. Uh, I mean, uh, they're the one when set up all of this, but they wasn't at the meeting. Yeah, yeah, Abel and, and Robert and Felicia, this this. Uh and an example of what can happen in a corporation, you know, development sort of things is the, when you look at Kawa and the taking of Kawa, I would call it, okay, how the subgrant agreement has been scripted to allow the, even though if the title is questioned, so they give the title in the agreement to the county, and the Attorney General of the Corporation State of Hawaii, whose office comes from the Kingdom of Hawaii, under normal conditions, he would have come in and gone after Ed Olson for dubious taking of Crown lands, like in the case Harris versus Carter, back in the 18, 1800s. Because everybody knows that the lands that were granted to the chiefs, one of which was Timoteo Keawe, which was Abel's ancestor, there was no title conveyed. Abel didn't possess the title. The title is held by the heirs and assigns. What I would like to help the listener who is unfamiliar with the island of Hawaii, Kawa has an aquifer. Is that correct? It's got some really important resources. Like, who's trying to take this? Is This is not PLDC land, right? Or is no. It? No, oh. these... Uh, the... the well, it is, it was, it is, <laughs> and it isn't, <laughs> see, because all of the lands to the chiefs are actually government lands, government. of which the Congress said in 1920, under the Hawaiian Homes Act, that the Hawaiian homelands shall be known as the government and crown lands. Yeah. The Attorney General knew, William Eilidham knew, yeah. that there was no, that that Ed Olson nor anybody else who passed it to him could have the title. So is there something to do with quiet titling in here too, just for us beginners? I would say pilferaging of the trust. Okay. Because these are these are government lands. So they set it up so that the county and in the appeal that Abel's family will win because of the lack of jurisdiction in the lower courts to even rule on the subject matter of land subject matter which the lower courts have no authority in subject matter land that the county will find there's no title but the agreement brings in the US Fish and Wildlife Service it brings in the DLNR to the exclusion of the rights of the tenants 
and the heirs, the bloodline heirs. We're not talking about rights under Article 12 of the corporation. Spider to the fly says, come to me if you want to be a native Hawaiian. We're talking about a direct heir. That's like, you know, you're going into my bank account. You think you're going to, you're going to subject me to the rights? I can take money out when I want to. And if I don't, if I can't, you're going to tell me I can't. So this is, this, this is, this is a great problem here. But we're seeing it executed. These kinds of execution, uh, style, um, Gestapo have been going on for a long time. Yeah, and a lot of and a lot of other areas here on the Big Island. You know, they've taken three million acres here on the Big Island under the NARS and Nature Conservancy up here in the forest, and they've fenced all of these uh, all of these areas and their public lands. And they, uh, you know, they buy some of them. Uh, I don't know how they do that. And they then they're killing all of the pigs, you know, and all of the goats and the sheep and the and the things that we use to hunt and that we, you know, we feed our families with. And they're taking all of these lands, and it's DLNR, and their argument is the watersheds, and we have to protect endangered plants and endangered species. And what about the endangered people? You know, they, they, they don't seem to matter. And DLNR, you know, is, it's a hypocrisy from DLNR to say that they're going to protect anything. They've permitted golf courses and and resorts all over this place. More damage has been done to the forest by DLNR than by the pigs could ever do. And uh, it's, uh, you know, Waikileo Puna is one of the fights that we had, and it was an intact lowland rainforest, the largest one left in the United States. And they gave a permit to a geothermal developer, and they bulldozed DLNR permit, they bulldozed a three-mile road up into the heart of that forest and then a three-acre pad right in the heart of the forest, and they brought all the invasive species, right? No pig had ever done that kind of damage to that forest. So, you know, this this is a huge issue, and it's all all of these different lands. that they're, It's just a huge land grab, and PLDC, I think, is, is like... Uh, because saying it's just an acceleration of this, uh, how can we get all of these lands now and cloud the titles or or disperse these lands so that they're going to do away with these claims to these lands. I need to just say that we're at the top of the hour and you are listening to KKCR Hanalei KAQA Kilauea. This is Kauai Soapbox Live and right now we are honored to have Uncle Abel Louis and then Lico Martin and Robert Perdici, and we're talking about land acquisition uh, and um, land grabs. These are sort of like legal land theft, in my opinion. Continue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abel, yeah. how's it, brother? Okay, Can you tell us some that. story about the about the Pueos, what went happen? Oh, uh, Just to give people an idea of, you know, you know here comes Noah, here comes all the stuff. They say that they're going green and they're all for the environment. But what actually happened? Um, what happened was the puero. The owl, yeah. Yeah. Okay, the puero. He came, he came screaming to, to uh, about me and he screamed. And he made a circle and then he, he landed. And I, and I communicated with him. And he told me that his house was destroyed. And the guys was up there bulldozing. Um they was doing all kinds of things. Are those the pictures uh, that we presented at the D L N R hearing for the contested case where the Noah sprayed and they sprayed the whole cave and everything you need that those are all the pictures, right? And the Pueo died right in your yeah. arms, huh? The Pueo died in my arms. Not just one, huh? Not just one. They had seven Pueos that died, it's all on, um, I got this whole, I mean, this whole, um, big eight by eight tent, uh, photos that I took with me, and I, I took it to the contested case, and I showed them about the dead. There were seven dead hours there that within one year time, um, down in Kawa. Mm-hmm. So, um, I made, a, um, a report, and they came out, with um yes with um that thing that they spray 
um, out there and say that's a green killer bird. Roundup. And, yeah, the roundup. And that's all by the school and everything, all, all those pictures, school, yeah. All the pictures where they were spraying. And that you is know. the second largest water source on oh, the Big that Island. Is the huh? second largest water source over there at Kawa. And I made many reports about all of this to them, and uh, it's always being ignored. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that, that's the water. That's um, about this is to do with Tutu Man's water. The water rights are preserved underneath uh, Timothy Okiavi. Okay, right. And he has all the mineral rights to use for for the land and the people. And um, <laughs> uh, so the so the expensive. privilege so in the in the agreement of the grant back in the 1850s of which you know Tutu Man he applied yeah. it was surveyed I've actually remember the surveys yeah. the privilege of water was given to the chief the chief okay the chief and being the heirs of the chief the privilege of water. I remember looking at one of the county real property parcel printouts that we got one time when Ed Olson shows up. Yeah. And all of a sudden he shows up on there, of course, tax map keyed, keyed only with no determination of ownership. And I think that's one of the issues. That the Who is Ed Olson? Ed Olson is the head of the Nature Conservancy. He's yeah. also a very big storage man. Perhaps involved in uh, what has already taken place up in the uh, Wood Wood Valley area, where they've been um, experimenting with the uh, seabed mining tailings and uh, mixing them in with, uh, you know, we could be looking at heavy metal storage people, uh, things like this. But anyway, when Ed Olson's name showed up, Abel, on the as with full powers, you know. Full powers, uh, you know, and here's a guy, you know, where the county, I mean, anybody can walk into the county, come with a bogus deed, come with this and that, and the county, it just does whatever, no determination of ownership, and all of a sudden there you have the heirs holding that, that privilege of water so that they could set up a water company, okay, and, 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 uh, be holding to all the rights of the tenants and and all of these kinds of things, but here comes Ed Olson. This is a this is a water takeover, and um, you know. But anyway, Lisa. Uh, well, I want to say that Kaiulani. I can't pull her up on the air in the group with all of us on here, but she is on another line, and she would like you all to speak to the issue of the Evie, the bones. Yes. Felicia, um, I'm go ahead and go to cool. the meeting, so why don't you bring her into the conversation, and I really appreciate, uh, enjoyed listening to all of you, I learned a lot, thank you all. Okay, thank, thank you, Robert. Robert. Yeah, man, go, thank let's you. get together, man. Uh, <laughs> anytime, anytime. Okay. Aloha. Okay. Aloha to you, too. Aloha, Uncle. Aloha, no. Love you. Okay. Okay, the easy, huh, Abel? No. And I think Ka'i Olani is on the line with us now. Ka'i? Oops, no. Aloha. Hello? Hello, you're there. Yes, I'm here. But I've got a busy time. Okay. okay, I think I accidentally hung up on Abel to get you in. Uncle Abel, if you're listening, call back, please. Okay, so go ahead and ask your question, Ka'i Olani, and then I think uh, I can't share the line with you and him. Okay, thank you, Felicia. What a feat of engineering you are doing right now. I know how it is. Um, I am really, really amazed, flabbergasted, knock me over with a feather that they are using the protection of Evi Kupuna as an excuse to take away this place. I mean... I, it boggles my mind because I, as you know, was arrested for putting my body between a backhoe and Evi Kupuna that were being dug up by the state. Um, and so I am just completely amazed at their use of every single thing that occurs um, when they feel like it. And I, all I have to say about it is just that I'm so, so sorry 
for the family of Uncle Abel and for all of us, we all lose, you know, we all lose because they have dug up so many EV and desecrated so many people's bones. And all of a sudden, yeah, they're, they're worried about the EV. It's a, it's a little mind boggling to me. And then how they're going to then backpedal from being worried about the EV and then once they dig them up to desecrate and do whatever it is they really have planned for Ovrea, then what? Then what happens to the protection of those EV? And um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that they're even using this as an excuse and uh, portraying as if Uncle Abel is going to desecrate EV Kupuna or something. I don't know. I've been in mourning for days over this. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm glad glad you brought it up because it's it, again it's another uh, another tactic, another part, another tool that they use, and definitely in this area as I had experienced it uh, for the last 12 years since 2002 uh, since 2000 going there with Abel, is that they are using uh, that issue of historical places to um, to ride to ride in sort of giving them presenting themselves as, as having a sense of caring and a sense of respect and um, you know they're bringing in other people who have already even been paid off for their claims and a lot of this kind of stuff but I think with respect to Evie, for the broad listening audience... And Abel is on the air. And Abel, okay. That in March 19, 2010, the National Park Service sent a letter to the Department of Land and Natural Resources along with a 130-page report of an audit that was conducted by the Na National Park Service under the uh, direction order from the Office of the Inspector General because somehow the State Historic Preservation Division which has been charged for the last 20 years with signing off to ensure that the Federal Reserve note when it comes into Hawaii is, is affording the word they call it consultation to the people whose historic properties have been affected, uh, to the owners of the land title. And it seems that in this report, if anyone really wants to know, get a copy of this report. You can go online. It's dated March 19, 2010. And the title of it again? It's the report on the Hawaii State Historic Preservation mm. Division. Okay. If you wanted to look at the forensics as an example, they dropped a bomb on Hiroshima. Oh, really? They dropped a bomb. Well, did anybody get hurt? This report shows a hundred and it, it lists and asks for a hundred and forty-four projects were federally funded. No records exist. Okay. Wow. So, so, so the intent of. Uh, so that's with respect to the EV. And of course, for those who have been following this uh, historic preservation uh, reorganization issue under the corporation, it's like trying to take a fox out really quickly, uh, give him a lot of vegetables, have him go vegan, and throw him back in the hen house. Okay? Um, the damage has been done. The record is out. Okay? If there was any. Uh, anything sacred about the Native American Religious Freedom Act which was created by the way as a result of the Kohola before who went before Sam King pleading that they were not guilty because of it was their religious right to go to Kohola well the spider to the fly says well you got a good story now I'm gonna pass it up to the Congress and we are gonna create which never what what never really had to exist before and you are on the reservation I've lived in Indian country Indian country is Indian country they what they do what they want to do in there with their religion but nevertheless they created the Native American Religious Freedom Act and everyone thinking and they included Native Hawaiians Okay, and now Native Hawaiians, this is when you start to see the apartheid term that was used exclusively under the Hawaiian Homes Act 
become a part of the daily bread of the Congress. And I want to pull into this conversation. We have Radar Yadao on the line and Uncle Abel. You're listening to KKCR Hanalei, KAQA Kilauea, Kauai Soapbox Live. Liko Martin is helping co-host this the story about um, land acquisition. So, um, Radar, aloha. Aloha, Felicia. And aloha. Uncle Abel, aloha. So, aloha. Hey, aloha, Liko. Aloha, brother. Hey, man. Hey, Abel. Hey, aloha. Hey. Anyway, um... Yeah, I just see it uh, calling for this in a little while, and then I, I can say something later on after. Well, we, you know what? We have been talking about OHA. We've been using these acronyms really heavy. That means Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and there's also DLNR keeps getting thrown around. That means Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, Radar, you are running for the board of Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and um, just real quickly... I, what is your position on the Public Land Development Corporation and how do you feel about statehood and all these um, these legal tricks that have happened that can put a person like Uncle Abel as frame him like a squatter that needs to be removed rather than a generational konehike? Is that a fair word to use for you, Uncle I would Uncle say Abel? heir to the chief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I see that as um, uh, more oppression yeah, to our people, and uh, I don't, I don't think the PLDC has any right to do this. And I'm for the repeal of it, actually. And I was just looking at this one um, bill that they they passed, yeah, um, Act Two Eight Two, about the uh, um, they they they're ordering the DLNR to give this uh, property up in the I think it's in the uh, I, I guess there's a boat harbor out there in um, I don't know North Kona side I think but they're ordering the DLNR to give this piece of property to the, uh, the PLD wow. what's that? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And then, in my thing, uh, you, they see this. In one part, it says that the, um, the definition of public land means all lands and interests, including accreted lands not otherwise awarded. So that was stolen, yeah. I, I just not see how they can do this kind of thing. I think, uh, you know, Hazard Bar Radar, I just got back from Alaska. Oh. Uh, okay. How they can do it, why they do it. Okay. Yeah. Now, we all know, maybe we don't all know, that Senator Stevens, who was the, uh, you know, I'd say the progenitor of the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, has been a very close friend of Senator Dan Inouye. Right. Okay. Now, when I went up there just uh, two weeks ago, uh, about actually about three weeks ago, there was a strange similarity in the, the the types of developments that were coming in to target those harbors uh, where the people, where the uh, indigenous people lived, Alaska natives, uh, tribes. Of course, the funding uh, with Inouye at the head of the uh, the checkbook there. Uh, but there's just a similarity, and, and when I was there, I knew that I would come back and send a warning flag out for us, Kanaka in Hawaii, and all of the people who really care about and who are aware that you, you, you've got to have the proper management here, of, and that you have to respect the prior users and the prior occupiers because they hold the knowledge in order to properly manage the resources, but if you if you're looking at Wailua Marina, yeah, uh, you know in Juneau the Clinket uh, the winter home for the Clinkets is now filled with six tour boats. 
and they live in the shade in poverty in drugs in no jobs okay so this is what we have to look forward to and it's going to accelerate Honokohau they will bring in there'll be more charters there'll be this is what we oh, have to why we have to better. begin to address the the institution not just the people and the acts and the little departments but the entire institution in my opinion of the state of Hawaii corporation and hold the Congress accountable because they're everybody's in bed together even the judiciary is getting involved in the taking okay when the judiciary comes in and says well I guess you know because of the public use like in Abel's case right we go before the head judge federal judge and uh, in Honolulu and Judge K who you know historically comes with the plantation he says well the case isn't even heard and he comes up and he says oh well for the public interest looks like we're going to um, you know uh, the public interest may prevail it's not for him to say so yeah. at every level so where do we go here where does the pressure need to be put when we put it home here or we put it on the people who should be held accountable and that is basically the Congress of the United States and all of its constituents and the situation that they have set up here where there does not equal footing Dwight Eisenhower in proclamation executive proclamation 3309 clearly states that Hawaii shall be admitted into the Union upon the requirement of equal footing and there is no equal footing we have discrimination and human rights treaty violations yeah and it's not just a crime against us but it's a crime against everybody else who's being extorted okay. alcohol is the perfect crime and I mean you need it you know Loud, uh, I had a caller question and they were asking about the great Mahele and was wondering if you all considered it a ploy initiated by the business, you know, missionary class to divide and conquer the culture. Was when the land division started happening, did it accelerate any of this challenge or is that seem even relevant at this point? Well it's it I I, I can I've looked at it I've experienced it, and the Mahele, some of the comedians up in the uh, University of Hawaii, they'll listen to it, and they'll say, well, the people never got their lands, uh, they this and that, and there was only a few people who were able to get their lands surveyed, etc., etc. Nevertheless, the, the usage of the land, the tenancy on the land was was really um, protected by f first of all by the fundamental laws of 1841 and 1842 and the Declaration of Rights of 1839 which preceded the Mahele okay the fundamental laws came out of Lahaina Luna which declared the protection for the people and the chiefs and was designed so you would have continuity in land usage that's the beef that's the that's the issue here it's not about who's white who's black and this and that it's about the usage of the land so when the corporation deleted the word national okay and created OHA they set the stage where they no longer uh, go see OHA because the OHA is charged with settling the claims of 1893 uh. well that blew up in them I hope the people of the world can really see that this was a conspiracy okay and like in Nazi Germany you know they had enough evidence to go after individuals for individual crimes but it was not important without the institution you could not have these things you know happening well, I've, I, before I came on the show, I looked at the Treaty of Reciprocity between the United States of America and the Hawaiian Kingdom, which is April of 1875. And I'm kind of new at reading that, but it seemed to me that it's about who's making more money. Well, the Treaty of Re Reciprocity actually still was in effect long after 1893. And it has actually been brought into the modern times by Ed Kaivi, who is an heir for the, the, uh, on Maui under Queen Emma's lands, 
who is a dual citizen of Canada and the United States and he went to the State Department two years ago under the reciprocity treaty to see if why the United States in Hawaii was not honoring the agreement on the water rights payments and the regulation of the water in East Maui. So the reciprocity is yes, it's, it's about still relevant. Money. Yes, it's, it's still about relevant. money and Absolutely. it's still relevant. And yes. let me ask um, Radar a question. Radar, yes, why, why are you running for Office of Hawaiian Affairs and how do you think um, your being on that board can make a difference? Well, I was actually running for this office here because this last trustee here on Kauai never, never showed up to any meetings in the last four years. He never did nothing except collect his paycheck. And then he's supposed to be working for us as uh, beneficiaries. And when, when you have somebody that's not doing nothing for the people, you get kind of frustrated. So... It's kind of one of the reasons why, but um, I actually run because I try to make right decisions for our people to and and do what what right for for our people. Well, and I'm I'm wondering, and this is as a, a you know not somebody who's been here generationally. Is there what kind of influence does? OHA have when I hear Office of Hawaiian Affairs is there a way to help impact the legislation so we can do things like remove quiet titling because it seems like quiet titling is a way of creating theft and it seems to work the most effectively by people who live a more traditional way whose lives are not centered around pushing information around well they should have a lot of influence because um, you know with all this there's, there's, uh, when they did the, created OHA, OHA was there to, um, protect the trust of the public land. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see them doing nothing about that. They touched this, um, PLDC thing and then OHA not doing nothing about it. Well, I see that they did give, um, a statement against it, though it seemed like that came after, as we've seen, island after island after island, particularly outer island, a very strong voice against it. Uh, only people I know that are stating for it seem to be people who are in an elected office at the state level, because I want to commend the county councils for Hawaii, Kauai, and Maui for um, unanimously saying, hey, you know, this is a take from home rule. This takes away from the communities even being able to not have their basic zoning overridden. You know, there's a lot of areas where this is a take at a local level. But I saw that the Star Advertiser did a very big spread on the PLDC and um, even there, you know, when they they give the justification for it as this is I'm kind of repeating legal a little bit when, when they're saying okay we need to fix this harbor or that other thing it seems like such an overreach you know well, you wouldn't need to just take all the land without question Oha didn't intend to call for a repeal of Act 55 actually it's in their minutes of one of the meetings but I guess this is election year so they probably changed their position my guess is that they'll probably change it back, change their minds again after the election. They and do not, nothing about it. And you would not do that if we elected you? Oh no, I, I would, I would, um, I would try my damnedest to, um, to try to get a repeal of this. And do you have direct experience with? Um, land management from a traditional sense. Do you fish? Do you hunt? Do you clean the awai? Do you plant kalo? I think it's important for somebody that actually knows the traditional methods for being well, in that office. Actually, I do hunt. I do fish. I do plant kalo. I do uh, have a vegetable garden that I I, I plant. I, I raise, kind of like to raise my own vegetables. Yes. And so, I, I do all those things. 
been doing it most of my life, actually. Rita, this is Liko. How are you, Liko? Okay, well, if you were elected to OHA, okay, yeah. would you think it would be a good idea if OHA entertained filing suit? against the state of Hawaii because, you know, OHA, right, they had this whole settlement thing, this so-called settlement of lands, and OHA was given land, and he will give you a check, and now all of a sudden, the other lands that, you know, are still the same lands, uh, to entertain for OHA to speak up for breach of trust. Oh, definitely I would. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and because to, to me that would be an issue... Uh, a breach of trust on this, on the state, you know? Yeah. And actually by the Congress itself, that the Congress has to take responsibility because, um, you know, everybody knows the lands were stolen and they were not ceded. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you know. That's why I, I never use the term ceded land. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like hear my mama over there. Please. Okay, um, you know, just like I would say, you know, Kawa is not for sale. Okay, and the lands already was made Pono. The land was divided into three parts. Yeah. One to the government, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. one to the chiefs and one to the Makaina. Yeah. And, 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 and that was the land. That was, everybody had equal footage, everybody had the, you know, you, you malama and you leave, and everything got haywire, you know, and this is what we have today, a lot of, um, a lot of shenanigan, a lot of this and that went on, and it caused all of these things that what we have today, because, oh, uh, I, I was one of them when they was formed in 78, and, uh, we, we was all told, you know what I mean, so, uh, we went to China, and then, uh, I came out, and they lost my papers, and I don't know what happened to all our papers. So, um, or, I mean, or I cannot speak for the people of the, about the land. I mean, they, they have Koreana and responsibility. Then, uh, let's make it Pono. Yeah. You know, and to make it right, because uh, that is the Kuliana, you know, that is all our Kuliana and responsibility. Mm -hmm. That means that we must malama the land. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of but the government and, and divide all of this, uh, what they call Pilikia among the people and the land and who own them and who can go to the beach and they got to get lucky and key. Now you, now you cannot even go there for go fish or what not. They're like, no, if you can if you can get you sign up for go get your register for your net, what you know what I mean? Yeah. You can catch. I mean, hey, I mean this is this is what we come into Hawaii. And uh oh, no can even go get his cow cow now from the ocean. What's going on? I and mean, people have to look. I mean we can't go to the forest now to go get the pig. They're fencing them all off. This whole deal that we, it affect all of this and much more. Because even the, um, the animals cannot go there because they will kill the pig. The pig, um, Kuyama was, they're the one that stays in the forest and they can make the water hole where all living creatures come to. And they all can come there to, uh, have a church and whatnot. Only difference when us come over there, we like, oh no, we like kick out everybody. So how come one can leave in harmony? The water rights and what Bada was saying is all, was all there for the people, not this kind of deal that they're doing. You know. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hello. Um, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, another thought about OHA. Yeah. Okay, yeah. when, when OHA was created, <clears throat> Some people say it was done out of a sense of justice, but we all know now that it was done as a part of a conspiracy to put us on under a reservation federal Indian law. Yeah. But the, what they did was to eliminate the word national inside of the bylaws of the corporation under Article 12. Wow. Okay. 
So they did that by having a constitutional convention. Yeah. So it could an idea be an an approach to this is for the corporation to reinstate the recognition of national usage because national usage means the way the land was used by that by this nation, by the nation. What nation are we talking about? The people who was national origins are listed under the Proxmire Act, which is a codification of the genocide conventions of the UN under US law. So that word national, yeah, because national means you have a title. And that's why with the elimination and if we keep that word all if because that word is not there, the corporation is a rogue, it's a wild elephant. It's accountable. They think they can do anything they want to do. So if as being part of OHA, would you push for another constitutional convention and reinstate national usage? I would do that also. You know, Uncle Ico, um, maybe you can call me after the show because I have something for share with you after. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you got to give me your number though. Okay. I, I can give it okay. to okay. you. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I will do that um, after. So you are listening to KKCR, Hanalei, K-A-Q-A, Kilauea. And um, I think that we will be pretty soon. I just, somebody has been waiting patiently for about an hour, literally, on hold. He's going to be calling back soon um, with the voice of a group that is supporting you, Uncle yeah. Abel. We're going to be right. hearing from him. Yeah. I think this is... Uh, Nope, it's a different one. Hang on, let's see if we have an outside caller here. Oops. Oh, oh no. All right. Uh, you're on the air? Hi. Hello. <clears throat> hi. This is Marge, and I wanted to say hello to Liko. And, um, hello, Marge. Hi, Liko. And um, I just wanted to thank you for being on the air and being so dedicated to the call. Um, is so Abel no still on, too? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> I don't know if very many of you folks know this, but Rico wrote this song, Akua O Kalani, and um, it was recorded uh, back in uh, about 2000 as uh, part of a fundraising album that my husband Fred put together for Uncle Butchie's Aloha March in 2000. And as far as I know, it's w I think it's the only recording that Uncle Butch uh, is recorded on yeah King. yeah yes and it's a beautiful beautiful song and i hope that somebody can find it uh in the studio there i know several several times it's been put there but also several times people have walked off with it so but it's called aloha march 2000 i but will try i know it is on this uh computer here i just don't know if i know how to find it yeah, and, and it's just wonderful that Liko is uh, just so attached to um, sticking with this situation because unless all of us are into it for the very long run, and it is going to be a lo long run well after my demise, I'm sure, uh, but that's what it takes. And um, Liko, I was um, doing pitches for... Um, uh, Naleo Kauaian issues on Saturday with Mahalani, and we were trying to think of the name of Butchie's friend, Uncle. Uncle Herman Kane. Oh, yes. And yes. Well, was he the person that wanted to start a radio station with Uncle Butch? Um, I'm not sure about that, but on that song, uh, it was Uncle Herman's first time in the recording studio also. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you know, Marge, it, with the context of what do we do here? Um, the Aloha March, of course, you know, I was very close with Butch and everything. And at that time, the uh, the play was on to get federal rec recognition and, and, you know. Uh, but one of the things that was happened and does happen is that sometimes you play into the enemy's hands. And, f and Butch was aware of this. We talked about it. But in this context, now that there is no federal recognition, I'm sure they'll still f try to... F try to push it through but I don't think so uh, that maybe there should be another march to Congress perhaps to New York to to show that the gig is up like Abel is saying uh, that whole uh, federal recognition thing was uh, a ploy to try to sanitize and cover up the criminality of not only 1893 
but the actions uh, of the corporation since 1959, which really has has had to be operating under Geneva Four, which are the laws and customs of war on land and the annex regulations. Okay, that this is um, that this is you bringing up another idea. You know, yeah, a march to Washington because you know it was George Bush who came out full sabers blaring, brought out the Texas Rangers against Inouye. While his term was there, the Akaka Bill was dead in the water. I'll tell you that much. Because of information that he received, as that laid it out uh, in, re- in terms of that. And so long as the Republicans are there in the Senate, it will not get out of committee. So promises, promises. But Abercrombie was the one to be the Judas. Mm. And uh, Marge, yes. I accidentally had hung up on somebody who's been waiting like a solid hour to come on the air. I'd like to um, oh, okay. let them have that chance. Well, just a real quick answer from Liko. Is there anything that you can think of that can get us all into the same canoe? Human rights. Yeah. We're looking at the human rights treaties, the protocols, uh, the human rights treaties, will they, they cover it for everyone. Okay, and this is to me where the the next phase, uh, 40 years I've been walking with this, uh, halfway through 50. Uh, out of Kaho'olawe, there was a, there was a, the spirituality of, of this means in five movements, just like having a hand. You've got the four corners, but try to pick something up without your thumb. <laughs> we are in the Palima. This is the Palima. This is to, to have the prophecy of the Huli Honua. Now, the prophecy is something that the state corporation is also infiltrated into our culture, and they're trying to say that our ali'i were no good. You mean you got to say Queen Lili Okalani was no good? Mm. Okay, and they're trying to read the prophecy, and that the prophecy is that this, this situation that is upon the people of, in Hawaii is affecting everyone's ability to, to malama the land and be one. There is a way, Marge. Absolutely, there is a way. There is more a way than there is not a way. There is, like one of my teachers, he said, Liko, you can't get mad at everybody. One-tenth of one percent. That's all it's doing it. Mm-hmm. But you have to diagnose it. You have to know what the disease is and where you can go for the remedy. And where not to go. Don't Where not to waste time. Where to focus energy. Absolutely, and Lico, thanks again, and I will get off the air because I know Felice is waiting for a call. Well, I, he's but, been waiting, so but, I want to no, honor but him. But thank you so much, Lico, for all of your energy. Yeah, you guys and, too. Um, <laughs> I gotta come see the can, farm, man. <laughs> if anyone can find that uh, wonderful song of yours, that would be wonderful to close the show on. Uh-huh. Thank you, Aloha. 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 Thank you for your patience. Uncle Abel is on the phone with us. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I, what I wanted to do was to address uh, Nico's uh, answer on the, the getting everybody in the same canoe. There's actually another canoe that is available. Um, there is a Mo'i who has stepped forward. He has put forward a vision and a plan. If you go to kingdomofhawaii.info, you will see the vision and the plan. You will also see a letter that he sent to President Obama yesterday regarding ABLE situation. In his view, the ABLE situation is simply a reenactment of the overthrow of the kingdom. ABLE was there with the Kuliana to protect the land for the kingdom. Nobody had any complaint about his protection of the Evi, Kapuna, or anything else. They simply used that as an excuse to once again invade kingdom lands and take them for private purposes. The, the overthrow that took place in Kava is the same as the overthrow that took, overthrow that took place in 1893. That is the, the one canoe that we can all get into. If you go to the website, kingdomofhawaii.info, there is a vision and a plan that can be followed. The name of the Mo'i is Edmund Kali'i Silva, Jr. He has been working for almost a decade now on the sovereignty side of things. He's kept very low-key, uh, basically building as he goes. He now has uh, numerous nations around the world that have offered him recognition and financial support. They've asked the Kingdom of Hawaii to hold a peace conference in Hawaii to try and settle issues that could not be settled in places like 
United Nations, issues like the Middle East conflict to bring that to Hawaii and have Hawaii help to resolve it. Uh, he has a, a plan called the Aloha Aina Narrative that deals with the internal workings of the kingdom and a vision of building a self-reliant, sustainable, independent, non-aligned nation <coughs> that hosts, serves as an example for the world and serves as a peaceful agent to, to resolve conflicts in the world. This is something that's coming. It's real. It's here. It's now. I urge people to take a look at kingdomofhawaii.info, read the documents for themselves, and make their own decision. Nico was also absolutely right earlier to link that the Public Land Development Corporation and what is being done with, with kingdom lands is the same thing as what is being done with ABLE. It's all part of the same puzzle. They've got these lands illegally. They're trying to figure out how to legitimize the fact that they hold these lands and to exploit the lands for private purposes without recognizing that, in fact, they're dealing with kingdom lands. So that's the fundamental issue here. The land is, the life of the land is preserved in righteousness, and the land is the source of the spiritual strength of the Hawaiian kingdom. And that is what's being challenged here, and it's up to the people who believe in the Hawaiian kingdom to step forward and say, no, that's it. We're drawing a line, and that's over. We're building a new civilization in Hawaii that's going to be the civilization that's a model for the rest of the world. That's wonderful. And Thank I, you. I Thank did you. post that link on both the Kauai Soapbox Live page on Facebook and my Felicia Alanji Cowden page, so that link is out there. Do you want to say anything directly to Uncle Abel? Then we're going to take one more caller, and then uh, that'll be power for the calls. And just Uncle Abel, this is Lanny, and I, I send you my aloha and my love, and thank you so much for your strength. Hey, send them back to you and all um, to the Moe. I love you guys, and uh, we talk later on, okay? Okay, well, Yes? Okay, thank you. And so we have one more caller. Aloha, you're on the air. Hi, aloha. Aloha, so you're on Aloha, radar, and Nico. So, oh. Jim Colley. I just uh, wanted to, just in regard to your, uh, uh, when you're, I, I came in late, but I just heard you mentioning about the, uh, the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the national entity and uh, uh, you know, the constitutional convention thing. So anyway, I just wanted to, you know, as, as, as Radar is well aware, uh, I just wanted to suggest, and I'm sure you're, and you're well aware too, Lico, about the uh, uh, the infrastructure is already laid down. You know, the infrastructure already exists uh, in the reinstated Hawaiian nation. You know, we already got all, yeah, the foundation is already the rock and roll. And I just want to remind everybody of that, and I, I forget the website, reinstated.org. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's really great. And, and for, um, on August 26, 1989, at the East-West Center, Senator Inouye, and when he was chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Indian Affairs, convened a meeting that dealt with amongst uh, the topics were the first one, the, the greatest threat, or I'd say the the statistics on Hawaiian health, on the health of the Kanakas, was has ri had risen to a point where uh, they started to give money out, and because there was something wrong, okay, and it got down to the diet not being in the land. But one of the other subjects that came up at that hearing was the issue of sovereignty. And our right. political status, okay. And I want to the 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 comments that were quoted in the in the newspaper, and Dan Inoy was quoted as saying, "I would have been horrified if the Hawaiians had stood in unanimity." And you know, I was shocked at that. Yeah. You know, why would he be horrified? Has something well, that, gone that, wrong? because that's against his agenda. In okay. fact, that also touches on another subject I might mention, uh, <clears throat> going through the route through the United Nations. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like the other side, you know, the, the Hawaiian Kingdom guys. It's like going through the devil's backyard. You know, look that's up true. the United Nations and the Lucius Trust, the, you, you know, which used to be mm -hmm. the Lucifer Trust. It's all, that, that's the devil's backyard. And, you know, in fact, the... Re at the first, at the first constitutional convention in uh, Waimea, Big Island, in '91, I believe, 
where I, I renounced my American citizenship and swore my allegiance to the Hawaiian nation. That the uh, you know, the, the, the reason was it was about you know it was, it was all about truth and justice. You know, the, the Lord I serve is a, is a you know a God of justice, not just us, but a God of justice. And the you know the, the the world is on an agenda for you know the new world order and you know Satan you know the Antichrist all that stuff is the stage is being set on the fast track right now and I thought the best bet our best bet was to get out from underneath the American umbrella before the one world government locks in and we're running out of time for that but nevertheless the United Nations is the devil's backyard so I just like to just you know leave that on your plate to. Mm-hmm. My, yeah, I, I'm aware of the, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, you start talking about, you know. I thought, you know, tr- truth is the bottom line. Yeah, that maybe maybe the devil's backyard, we need somebody from the devil's backyard to clean, clean up somebody else's devilish actions. Yeah, well, you know, the, you know, the, the you Lord know. Got, the, got Satan on a leash, you know, and he's giving him some leash right now. But yeah, yeah, well, you know, whatever, you, you know, it, whatever road it takes to get yes. to the position. Of uh, yeah. sovereignty. Well, thank you, caller. Hello. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, guys. Um, Uncle Abel, I'm wishing you the very best. Kirk Smart is in here. He's going to have the history of jazz really soon. I want you both to be able to um, give a little bit of um, follow up. Manao and Liko, I want you to pick a favorite song that you have on this very CD that I put in for us to close out on after okay. we say aloha to both you and yeah. Abel. Well, I would, Abel, yeah. well, what do you have to say for us, bro? Share, share with us, man. I love you. Your pain is yeah. our pain, bro. Um, I thank you for giving the opportunity and the time to come on it and share with the Wana out there. Um, it's been a learning experience for me also from hearing from the from out there of what is going on and the avenues of the places that we can go and not to go and mm-hmm. all of this kind of good stuff that stayed there before. Um, I like thank um, all of you, uh, the station, um, you, Liko, and all of Wana, the dollar on the king speak and share the and you know, and this is right this on. Is awesome. You know, time. Abel, I wanted to invite you to come up to Kawaii because uh, we just got the 13 acres uh, on the king's land in the back of the shop. And I just over there setting up a camp. If you feel you want to come visit, come on the island. Uh, we'd love to see you, brother. Otherwise, I'll see you when, when, uh, when I get a, get a chance to fly down. I know the, 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 the kind of plovers came down already, huh? Yeah. You see, no yeah. one legged one. Ah, uh, no. You never see them in a long time, yeah? No, I know. The birds, all the plovers come there yeah. on their way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, my favorite song is, Song number eight on the CD, Felicia. Okay, and I try to get it and, right. And I like to preface this song, which was written just before Hurricane Niki. And I was leaving, my day camp was right behind the swimming pool in Kapa'a. And our night camp was in Anahola because you couldn't sleep in your van in Kapa'a. So in the day camp, and everybody was grumbling because I would have my day camp there. and But... It's a song about old park benches. And you know, the funny thing is that here comes the bike path. When the bike path came, all the park benches in Kapa'a, that used to be where the people would come and fish, and that's how the traditions and all the families had their park benches. There's no park benches anymore. Mm. I never thought that they, that it would happen. But this song was written right in the back of of uh, in Kapaha and back to swimming pool and I'd say this is one of my favorite songs it was produced up in uh, San Francisco and uh, with some real great players from the symphony orchestra the fiddler he was the first guy from there and it's kind of maybe tells us something you know the treasure 
the little things. Okay, great. Well, so we'll go out on that. But and Uncle Abel, um, yes, I like, thank I like you. The, I like to say something too about, you know, to my family out there. Yeah. I love you, Brenda. I love you, Aunani, and my nieces and nephews, wherever you guys are. And my brother, Bernard. And the kids. My, and, and my children up in Canada, Kanaka and Kiari and my daughter Leanne. I love you. Your dad loves you. And, um, oh, you guys are awesome. And, um, hey, um, to the people on the big island, I love you and wherever you guys are. Thank you for, um, giving us the time. Aloha. Aloha. And I love you, Liko, and I love you, Felicia, and thank you again. Mm, thank you. We're honored. All right,
on the campfire We were one together Old park benches remember Beautiful song, beautiful song, so much work. I'm still learning to do my music thing. Kirk's here, he's going to get that right. So if people want to buy that CD, what's it called? Uh, Lico Marte right now. Okay, all right. <laughs> so Good Aloha luck. Lico. <laughs> if you want to buy it, maybe you are not quite there yet. Okay, well, I'm going to be playing from some of our underwriters, and thank you again to all our listener yeah. support. And then you're going to hear the county council report, and after that, our very talented new programmer, Kirk Smart. <laughs> <laughs> 